Good afternoon and welcome to Hills Stadium in Saco in CTV 30's coverage of Thorn Academy Girls Soccer. Hello everybody, I'm Jay Harper along with cameraman Dennis Avery as we get set for 6-5-2 Thorn Academy hosting the 7-6 Bonnie Eagle Scots. These two teams both in the playoff hunt, but for Coach Gary Stevens, a lot of things have to happen for him to make it into postseason. Right now, the Lady Trojans are in eighth place, and a win here this afternoon would propel the Trojans into postseason play. So a big afternoon in store for the Lady Trojans and head coach Scott Nason. And these two teams played early on in the season. I believe it was the third game of the 96 campaign. It was actually the second. And Bonnie Eagle won that one 4-2. to two. Now getting the starters introduced for Bonnie Eagle. The Golden Trojans, though, started a little slow this season, and then they have come on like gangbusters here in the last half of the year. And have themselves positioned to make it in a postseason for the third time in four years. And you have to remember that the girls' soccer program at Thorn Academy in its only fifth year of existence. Scott Nason has been at the helm all five years, and he's done a great job with these ladies and the soccer program at Thorn Academy. Last year, they just missed postseason, finishing in ninth place. The year before, they were second overall in Western A, and in 93, they were first overall in Western A. Thorn Academy in their Last six games, starting with the 11 nothing win over Noble, then they came back with another shutout, beating Portland 2 nothing. Lost to Deering 4-0, tied South Portland at 2, beat Edward Little 4-1, and Macaulay 4-1. And that has put themselves in this position here this afternoon. We get the starters right now for Thorn Academy. We'll listen in to PA announcer George Mendros. As the starters for both clubs and for Thornton Academy. As I said, 6 5 and 2 right now in eighth place in the heel point standings in Western A. Top eight teams get in. Big game for the Trojans today. They win, and if Greeley loses to Wyndham, they would all but sew up the eighth place spot. Even if Greeley wins, the Trojans could still prevail and hold on to that number eight slot, even though Greeley has won 10 games during the course of the regular season. Coach Nason going with a lot of his seniors today in the starting lineup. Also Randy Mailman, the junior forward is not starting because of the injury she sustained last week. Got kicked in the head, had a slight concussion, but we should see her here this afternoon. Mailman, the leading scorer on the team she has 17 goals, 7 assists for 41 points on the season. Goals counting as 2 points, assists 1. Second leading scorer for Thorn Academy is Suzanne Picard. Picard 11 goals and 4 assists for 25 points. And then in third place in the scoring ranks for the Golden Trojans would be Amber Saucier. Saucier Jr. has 4-4 four and four for 12 points. Thorn Academy comes out in a somewhat unconventional offensive set. They play a 2-4-4. Bonnie Eagle counters with 4-3-3 four, three, three offense, four forwards and three midfielders and three backers, and Thorn Academy changes it up, and it 
creates an interesting matchup for both teams as they try to mark up defensively against one another. Bump called against Bonnie Eagle. Wind blowing left to right across your screen, so Thorn Academy having the wind advantage here in the first half, and they really need to take advantage. Good chance out in front for Thornton Academy. Good ball skills, kicked across, a shot, blocked out in front. Another chance, and that's boomed high over the net. Out across the track, Thorn Academy doing some very nice ball handling work out in front. Good job by Pickard, number 12, getting the pass over, and then a big chance out in front off the missed ball for Marissa Gagnon, and Gagnon sailed it high over the net. Goalkeepers for the two teams. Jamie Braun in the net for Bonnie Eagle and Katie Parisian in the net for Thorne Academy. Parisian has played in 13 games, made 111 saves, allowed 23 goals for a 1.77 goals against average. On averaging somewhere right about there as well. She is the backup keeper, the Starting goalkeeper, Tasha Asali, is out due to an injury. She had a 1.2 goals against average and unable to play here this afternoon because of an injury to her finger. Beautiful afternoon after some very cold weather for the beginning part of this week and latter part of the extended weekend. Temperature right around 60 degrees. Again, a big breeze. Nice chance. As Pickard leaves a nice ball, she gets it back, but loses control. Then again, a beautiful pass across and a chance for the Trojans. And that time, Sam Freeman dribbling a little too far out in front of herself as Pickard had done a great job at controlling the ball and getting it off on the right side. Ball just rolls over the goal line. It'll be... Free kick for the Scots. Again, it's Pickard controlling it. Heather Harmon, number 14, loses it back, and it's collected up the sideline, and Thorne Academy will get a throw in. Again, it's Harmon with the intercept. Pickard comes over, takes it away. Tries to center the ball. It's kicked out. The Lady Scots now try to move it upfield. Nice ball up in front, but knocked back in deep inside the Thornton zone. It'll roll across the out of bounds line. It'll be a throw in for Bonnie Eagle. Freeman over there with a steal, trying to get it back. Thorn Academy now working nicely, but Bonnie Eagle closes it up defensively. Pickard goes down hard. Nothing new there. Very aggressive soccer and basketball player used to going all out and Taking a lot of lumps along the way. Kick in front by Ashley Lambert. As Thornton has controlled play here in the opening moments of the first half. 35 minutes and 20 seconds to play in the opening half. Booming ball out by Bonnie Eagle and a nice headed ball back in and it'll be Pickard touching it up again. Nice little juke move, comes free in the middle. Scorable range and a shot out and it's blocked out in front. Doesn't get to Braun. Again, Pickard. She's being grabbed and call goes against Bonnie Eagle. Thorn Academy with a big early chance here. No score. Kick 
kick blocked out in front, and Braun able to come across the crease and make the save. Dribble and punts it up the right sideline out to midfield. Headed there nicely by number six of the Scots, and that's Michelle Morris. Harmon dribbling up the sideline, takes a big bump. The call should be against Thornton Academy. Guard controls it, gets it up the sideline, and knocked out of bounds by Bonnie Eagle. Kozen can't control on the sideline, and again, up the near side, and kept in bounds. Now Bonnie Eagle sends it up the far side, and their furthest penetration into Thorn Academy territory. Harmon working over there and able to make a nice juke move and get it deep. Inside, now they whistle her out of bounds, and it'll be a throw-in for Thorne Academy. Out in the middle, it's Pickard. Goes across into the midfield. Up for Freeman. Back across. Trojans with great passing here. Amber Saucia now tries to collect. She gets it back, sends it out in front. Pickard working in there. Ball headed into the middle and loose. Trojans send it in. They call a foul against Pickard as she was doing a nice job trying to use the body to ward off the defense. Bonnie Eagle won the first meeting between these two teams, as I said earlier, up in Standish, 4-2. In that game, Michelle Morris had a couple of goals. Pickard in, shoots just wide. Able to lay her body out and had the hook on it, headed for the far corner. And that ball just missed. Jesse Boudreau, number 20, just takes the ball out and knocks it out of bounds and tries to get her defense set. Bonnie Eagle with a throw in on the far side. Now they say Bonnie Eagle stepped out and it'll be a throw in for Thornton Academy. No score, down to 30 minutes and 50 seconds to play, opening half. Freeman with a long ball, unable to collect and it's booted up the field. Trying to head it out of there is Ashley Lambert. And now a chance for Bonnie Eagle. Moving into the zone for the Scots is Nikki Tron. Tron gets in. A little chip shot goes wide to the short side. Scott's able to keep it in, keep some pressure on. Nice ball up the field.
It'll be a throw in now for Bonnie Eagle. Quickly goes right back out of bounds and Thorn Academy will take over. Booming ball down the field by Zenelik. And Thorn Academy with a chance. Good crossing pass. But ain't able to pick it up is Freeman. Thornton, though, again, sends it up the side. Lambert gets it for Freeman, tries to turn on it. Broken up nicely on that near side. Von Eagle able to get it off a Thornton defender and out of bounds. Donna Billado, number 11, some strong play on defense. Ball out in the middle. Thornton Academy left unintended. Booming kick, and that one will sail wide. Kick now for Bonnie Eagle. Thorn Academy, as we said, coming in in the eighth position in Western A. This the last regular season contest of the year. And it could be on to postseason for both these teams. More likely, Thorn Academy having the better chance. Bonnie Eagle's head coach, Gary Stevens, said his team would need a lot of help to make it in from the number, number 11th position right now. Obviously, they'd have to win today then ask for some outside help. Thornton, though, pretty much controls their own destiny. They win today and really loses to a very good Wyndham team. Trojans should stay in the seventh spot, uh, eighth spot, excuse me, and get into postseason for the third year out of five as a varsity sport here at Thorn Academy. Ashley Lambert's throwing, knock right back out of bounds. Lambert, a senior backer. Now we'll give the ball off to number 20, Jesse Boudreaux. Boudreaux looks like it's going to line up a flip on the throw in. And there it is. It's a beauty. Wow. Right out in front, bounces up and over the net. Tremendous throw, and Pickard was there trying to deflect it in. I don't think that could be counted as a goal. It'd have to be touched by a Thorn Academy player. And Thorn Academy now comes with wholesale substitutions, including number 11, junior forward Randy Mailman. Long delay now before everyone gets settled into their positions. Randy Melman immediately in the middle touching the ball. Little juke move inside. She still keeps fighting in there and the ball still uncontrolled by either club. Now the big kick out by Bonnie Eagle, number 18, Bethany Curdy, able to get it up. And now down the sideline, go the Bonnie Eagle Scots. Kristen King, it's loose out in front, and then broken up at the last minute by Marissa Gagnon. Will be a corner for Bonnie Eagle. It's number five, Kristen Hawks checks in for the Scots. centered out in front and loose back in the Trojans leaving it carelessly out in front all chipped up and wide a few careless moments of indecision there for Thorne Academy fortunately the ball goes well wide of the net over the goal line booming ball up the sideline knocked down in play Kia Kozen gets control for the Scots. Now Thorne Academy 
Reed takes it. Picard leaving it up front. Again, there's Kozen. Back in the middle for Mailman, though. Mailman. Able to move free in the middle. Nice pass on that far side, and now it's Saucier who will give chase. Tried to head it in for Missy Foster, unable to connect, and now Bon Eagle will have a chance. Foster now working, trying to center it out in front. Nice job going to the left foot, but unable to center it. Blocked out in front, but goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Thorn Academy. Alexis Brazilovich takes the throw in. Again, it's Picard trying to, now it's out for Foster, and her attempted centering pass goes well wide of the net. 22.55 to play in the opening half. Jay Harper along with Dennis Avery. You're watching Thorn Academy Girls Soccer on CTV 30. This, the last regular season game, the Trojans 6-5-2. and two. Chance to make it into postseason. Going up against number 11, Bonnie Eagle, who are 7-6 and six on the year. And they're in the number 11 spot and still entertaining slim hopes of getting into postseason play. Pickard maybe... One too many dribbles, and Razalovich coming up in support, trying to make something happen, knocks it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Bonnie Eagle. Taking it will be number five, Kristen Hawks, and now goes out again in a another throw in. It'll be Tasha Hayden, number 13, stolen by Pickard. It's off for Mailman. Great ball up for Foster. Foster trying to work her way in and a nice breakup play for Bonnie Eagle. Kick in the middle and Bonnie Eagle actually plays it deep inside their own zone and not the smartest of plays right there. Hawks, because if she lets it roll, it goes out of bounds. It'll be a free kick for the goalie. Now Thorn Academy will get a throw in on the far side and they'll bring in Boudreaux once again draw a junior backer, and this is always fun to watch. It's high, launched in, beautiful accuracy again, headed out of there. Boudreaux comes back in, tries to center it, but right on the ground, unable to get it up in the air. Trojans, though, doing a great job at dominating play here. Showing a lot of poise and of maturity as well. A lot of good... Uh, Soccer style of play right now is they're being very patient and showing some good skills out there. Little chip pass looking for Mailman. Mailman though broken up nicely out in front. Pickard, a quick stop and spin, booms it. And that'll come in on Braun. She has to make the save. And brilliant move as Kate Spignardi, number 20, senior sweeper, came in and took it away. And Pickard. Chipped it back out of there and spun around and got off a lefty shot in on goal. Not a lot on it, but showing the skill. It's interesting, Dennis, up here. I'm actually getting a news report while I'm doing this game. It's, it's quite good. I can actually make out all the words and everything sitting here. And it's uh, the, the Marty antenna that's hooked to our building that just recently got attached, um, causing some interesting interference. And not sure if, if you're not picking up in your headset, you're, you're probably all set. Shot just goes wide. Headed in on Katie Parisian. 
the senior goalkeeper does not have to make a save. So my listening only. Stories about a man in Stoneham, Massachusetts, who has a king cobra as a pet. <laughs> Ball goes off the face of Bon Eagles, Kia Kozen, and it'll be Thorn Academy throwing in and moving it up field. Cross for Foster. Foster moves back, leaves it up front. Mailman trying to get control. He's dribbling in traffic. Pinches and pooches it for the far corner and just misses. Great work again by Randy Mailman. And you can see why she has 41 points on the season. 17 goals, 7 assists. She's been playing an insurmountable amount of valuable minutes since her freshman season. I'm not quite sure if she started her freshman campaign, but she did play an awful lot in that season and picked up numerous goals. And before she's said and done, she may end up the leading scorer here at Thorn Academy. Nice toss in. Mailman collects, goes around the defense, comes in the middle, stumbles just a bit, and then loses control again, trying to set up the offense and just one split second away from putting the Trojans on top. Substitution for Thorne Academy as Marissa Zenelik comes back in. Senior has re-entered and sitting down will be number 16, Marissa Gagnon. Mailman again, just getting caught up as she was about to break free. Pickard back and again. Suzanne Pickard doing a great job at controlling that ball out at midfield and then attacking offensively. And her and Mailman working great together. It's in the middle to Mailman. Mailman with a ball up for Missy Foster, but she can't get there just missing again you see the skill of Randy Mailman not only her own dribbling abilities and able to set up her teammates right there perfect ball just maybe a foot out in front oh, I've been able to figure out what station I'm listening to it's a Christian science station I believe coming out of the Scarborough area Pickard spinning on the ball and pounding it down the sideline, out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Bonnie Eagle. Bonnie Eagle loses it back, out of bounds. Number one, Teresa Dennison losing at that time. And Thorn Academy's Lindsay Libby has the same thing happen to her. Taking the throw in will be Tasha Hayden. Comes out to Mailman. Mailman trying to spin and work on the defense. Keeps control. Spins back around, blocked momentarily, tripped, and then does get it down the sideline. A nice ball kicked out of there by Hawks. Foster heads it up the near side. Mailman spins, gets it for Pickard. Pickard trying to control it. She does. Shot. Score! That's a highlight film reel right there. Great control by all the players involved. 
Missy Foster started it with a great head and then Mailman out in front and then Pickard able to control the ball off her knee, her leg, put it down and then fired it from about 25 feet out, a line drive just over the head of goalkeeper Jamie Braun. And Thorn Academy has taken the one nothing lead here with 14.37 to play in the first half. I believe it'll be Pickard from both Mailman and Foster. So officially it'll come at 35, 23, excuse me, 25, 23 of the first half. Melman controls it, gets it up the field, and Foster unable to stop in time to make a play on it. Comes up for Brazilovich, she loses it. Picking it up for Bonnie Eagle is Emily Brooks. Brooks, ball at the sideline, and Brazilovich able to spin and knock it back out of bounds. Laura Vogel sends it up the sideline. Foster, a nice job turning, getting it up the side, but it's punched right back in by Bonnie Eagle. Now a chance up the near sideline for Sally, number three, with the finger bandage up. You can see her down the sideline. She's the normal goalkeeper, but unable to play goal, but coming in and playing wing here for Coach Stevens. Ball out in front, lost, and Trojans trying to get it out, can't do so. Good ball up in front, and it's loose. And a nice job by Parisian to pick it up. And she'll now be able to bounce it and punt it up the sideline. Great play out in front by Bonnie Eagle that time as Trojans couldn't clear the zone. Sarah Gagnon working over there on that far side for Thorn Academy. It's very bizarre. It's coming in so loud at times, Dennis, I can barely hear myself think. Tom Whitehouse has the story. Nice play by Bonnie Eagle. Nice little ball up ahead for Laura Vogel. Kelly McCarthy, number two, playing very strong at midfield. Stolen away, though, from her by, I believe it's Hailman looking for Foster. Broken up and a nice job kicking it out of bounds by Christine Hawks. And Academy will come back in with Sam Freeman and Amber Saucier. Again, Woodrow will come to take the throw in. She's been right on target on her previous two. There it is again. Beautiful out in front. Loose ball, bouncing. Headed chance, shot up and in. <laughs> see if I can find the number. I'm trying to key in on the player. I can't see from way over here. But give the assist to Boudreaux. And a beautiful headed ball just over the outstretched arms of Braun. I believe it is number three, Sarah Gagnon, a freshman midfielder, picking up her second goal of the season to go along with two assists. A 
it is Sarah Gagnon getting it from Jesse Boudreaux, but give Boudreaux again an amazing throw in. Backflip spin and putting her feet perfectly on the sideline without going inbounds. It's a craft in itself and then getting such a trajectory and distance on that ball. And prior two times, Thornton just missing scoring opportunities. It was laid out there by Boudreaux. She had done her job and now finally she gets rewarded as do Thorn Academy as they take a 2-0 lead with 10.45 to play. That goal officially coming at 28-43. So less than three minutes after their first score, the Trojans get themselves a little bit of cushion. Huge game for Thorn Academy. The first televised contest of the season. Also their last regular season game. But if they win, they have a better than Ezra chance of making it into postseason. Of course, stranger things have happened. Of course, Scott Nason. Yelling instructions from the near side. We can hear him say to Marissa Gagnon, give him a throw, not a corner. She could have opted to kick that over the sideline rather than the end line, and that would have resulted in what Scott just said right there. But the corner kick is mute or moot because not much happens with it. Either word would work there, I suppose. Mailman able to pick it up. Great ball up around for Freeman, but broken up nicely over on that far side by Bonnie Eagle. Ball out in front. The Trojans able to clear it up the far side. Sostier comes over to pick it up. She punches it up ahead, but maybe a little too far. The Bonnie Eagle defense is there. And not too pleased with herself is Kate Spugnardi. Spugnardi, the senior sweeper, shakes it off after she knocked it out of bounds. She had a chance to put it upfield and in play. Mailman controls. In the middle, tries to look over and trying to pick up Picard, flashing down through, unable to do so. See a lot of skill performed down here by these lady soccer players, and they don't just kick and chase. They do a lot of nice ball work and a lot of nice teamwork. It's knowing where their teammates are and getting the ball to the open area. Thornton has done that on numerous occasions. Bon Eagle also doing some nice passing as well. Picard tries to break through, does come clear, puts it up for Saucier. Saucier on the wing and fires just wide. And again, another outstanding pass from Suzanne Picard, finding her teammate on the wing. And tough angle there, but that's a nice angle in soccer because your ball does usually take that right to left swing with a spin on it. And had she put that at the post with a little bit of hook on it, it would have found its way maybe into the corner of the net. She just miscalculated just a little bit. Soccer sport that I'm starting to understand and appreciate more and more over the years. Actually doing a little bit of kicking of the ball this past season. Nice ball up the far sideline. Bon Eagle coming in. Player falls down, the referees rule incidental contact. And the ball rolls out, it'll be a throw in for Bonnie Eagle. Kristen Hawks, number five, will take it. Puts it in the middle for number 18, Bethany Curdy. Back out, and Thorn Academy will take the throw in. 
had a chance to travel abroad this summer and go over to Europe and visit seven different countries. And what a great perspective that is for a football fan and trying to learn soccer and maybe appreciate it more. You go over there, soccer is by far the most passionate sport followed by Europeans and maybe in all of the world, as they do say. Good ball up for Saucier, but she has to turn on it. Now regroups, goes to the corner, tries to send it out in front. Ball left, and Braun able to collect before Mailman can get in for a shot. But every country in Europe, huge on soccer, and had a chance to w go to a uh, big-time soccer match in Glasgow, Scotland. I have a friend over there. My girlfriend and I went. And it was a friendly match, as they call them. That's a preseason match. There were still 47,500 fans on hand, and they played Lisbon, Portugal. It was a wonderful contest. What a great stadium in Glasgow. And, of course, all the fun for a fan before as Bonnie Eagle comes in again, a shot, and this time Parisian has to make the save. I believe her first save of the afternoon, and she punts it up through the middle of the field. Mailman takes a... Smack in the back, no call. Von Eagle able to control. Curdy sends it up. Another nice ball in. Chance for Bonnie Eagle. Nice pass back and a shot up and just goes wide. A nice shot from about 30 yards out. I believe that was Emily Brooks, number 10, taking the shot. It was after a fine play on the near side by number seven, Nikki Tron. Another nice pass up the side. Bonnie Eagle putting on some fine pressure here. Thorn Academy again averts near disaster out in front as the ball sails over the net once again from Brooks. Bonnie Eagle making a late run here in the first half with only 3.44 to play in the first half. Thorn Academy leading 2 0 on goals by. Susan Pickard and Sarah Gagnon back in front, deflected and saved as it went off. Marissa Gagnon and Parisian reacted in the nick of time, getting a hand on it and knocking it wide of the net. Bon Eagle with huge chance here, momentum. If they can score before the half ends and get back within one goal, it's anybody's contest to start the second half. If the Trojans can keep the 2-0 lead and make it a much tougher chore. Again, rolls in and again it'll be ruled another corner for Bonnie Eagle. Emily Brooks taking the corner kick. Nice ball blocked out of there by Thorn Academy. And another fine job coming up defensively for the Golden Trojans is Nisha Brown. Brown, a senior midfielder with two consecutive blocks. Pickard makes the tackle and takes it out of bounds, and it'll be another corner, and Brooks will take one more. 2.20 remaining in the half. Beautiful headed ball out of there by Pickard. Von Eagle with a nice headed ball by themselves. And that ball goes off. Bonnie Eagle. Nikki Tron can't control it. It'll be a throw in for Thorn Academy. And now Thornton knocks it out of bounds. Falling down and a little bit shaken up is Katie Arsenal, senior captain, able to walk it off. It's Bonnie Eagle now with a minute 25 to play in the half. We'll get another throw in 
Laura Vogel takes it up the near side and nice job at spinning on the ball and hammering it out of bounds. Not sure why the call was awarded to Thorne Academy, but they'll make a quick change. And they'll get the throw in. Ball spins away from Freeman. There's Susan Pickard. Pokes it over and Nisha Brown gets it up the far sideline. Nice takeaway by Bonnie Eagle. Thorne Academy gets it back. Picard using the knee and able to get it off the far side. A chance as Mailman gives chase into the corner. Takes a bump and then it's taken away and knocked out of bounds by Bonnie Eagle. It'll be a throw in for Thorne Academy. A quick little throw in and they go for the middle of the field. No one there. And Thorne able to get up and put away. Arsenal, nice pass out in front. Hooked and shot in and drawn right there. Down to 2-1, and that'll do it in the first half. An outstanding first half played by both clubs, especially by the Thorne Academy Lady Trojans as they take a 2-0 lead into half. Thorne Academy, as we said, 6-5-2 in the eighth position in Western A. Heel Point standings, a win here this afternoon should propel Coach Scott Nason and his bunch into postseason play chance for the 11th ranked Bonnie Eagle Scots to also get in but their chance is much slimmer and especially so now that they find themselves down by two at the half. Goal scored in the first half at 25-23 of the first half it was Susan Pickard from Randy Mailman and Missy Foster just an outstanding play by all three players using great skill and control to get the goal past Jamie Braun and Thorne Academy led 1-0. Less than three minutes later at 28.43, it was Sarah Gagnon getting the long throw in from the near side all the way to the far side of the goal. It bounced once up and over, and there was Sarah Gagnon, the freshman, heading the ball past goalkeeper Braun and Thorne Academy had the 2-0 lead, able to hold on in the waning moments of the first half as Bonnie Eagle put on a lot of pressure on goalkeeper Katie Parisian. And as you get a look at Thorne Academy down in the net in the sun, resting here at halftime, they have themselves a 2-0 lead. And just to finish up on the thing in Scotland, going to that match over there and seeing soccer played at such a high level and such great skill and such fans that are, are so into that sport. They know it so well. It's just like our football even more so. They they bet on the games over there, there's there's games on TV every week. There's sports shows about soccer each and every week about all the teams. And over there, there's there's all different levels of teams. There's there's uh, a regular like club level. Then there's a, the, the next level. Then there's a really high professional level. But all those teams at the end of the year, uh, whoever wins their division gets a chance to go into the World Cup, if you will, for for Europe, the European Cup, I think is what they call it. And they have a chance to play and and win the European Cup and. My friend's team from over there were called the Celtics. And it's quite unique, green and white, just like the Boston Celtics. And his team played to a 2-2 tie that afternoon, having a very good season over in Scotland, just talking to him recently, and uh, having a, an outstanding campaign. And about two weeks later, I was over in London, and all these people coming out of the, the bars and into the streets, dancing, celebrating, singing, going crazy, and celebrating. We're trying to figure out what it was and what they were all excited about. Finally asked somebody, it was because they had just signed one of their local heroes to a contract on their soccer team. He had come back from playing abroad into a, in another European country and literally <laughs> hundreds and thousands of people celebrating. So soccer is huge over in Europe and if you've never seen it, it definitely is something to behold and, and see. It was uh, quite rewarding for myself. We're at half right now here at Hill Stadium in Soccer. Thorne Academy leading 2-0. We'll take a break. Back with our second half right after this. Halloween can be fun, but it can also be dangerous. If you follow so many simple rules, it won't. Always go trick or treating with an adult. <laughs> you should always carry a flashlight at, at night when you go trick or treat. That's right, Dickie. You should always have your parents check your candy before you eat it. 
If the light isn't on, then don't go to that house. Wear bright clothes so people driving can see you. Welcome back to Hill Stadium in Saco. Jay Harper along with cameraman Dennis Avery. Thorn Academy starting with the possession here in the second half, leading 2 0. Eighth seeded Golden Trojans trying to make it into postseason play. A victory over Bonnie Eagle today should give them enough heel points to maintain their eighth position and final position in Western A. Now in years past, the three, four, five, six, seven, and eight seeds have had to play a preliminary round where one and two got a bye. Trojans right off the bat. Saucier with a nice little ball trying to feed it over for a teammate. Zanalik can't control it, and it's knocked out of bounds, and Thorn Academy will have possession. Zanalik will take it, throw in, and Headed ball back out a little bit, but Missy Foster trying to get control. She can't. A big pass out in front. Bon Eagle with a nice pass. Good work right there from Curdy. Blocked out in front. <coughs> Brazilovich unable to contain it, and it'll be a corner for Bonnie Eagle. They do have the wind in their favor in the second half, although it's died considerably, so not that much of a favor here. Again, it'll be Emily Brooks who will take the corner. So far, she has been unable to really get it high and deep enough to really be a factor or a threat against Parisian or the Golden Trojans. Woodrow booms it out of there, up for Pickard. A lot of room in the middle. Goes across, looks back for Pickard. Pickard up the side. Little dish over for Foster. Foster back out in front, and it's broken up. And able to retake it. Nice spin back for Saucier. Sarah Gagnon, number three, again, make a nice play. Mailman, good ball work. Tries to spin it off the far side, looking for Foster. Goes wide and over the goal line. It'll be a kick for Bonnie Eagle. Last time these two teams met, Thorn Academy lost 4-2 in that contest. And in that game, 
Sue Pickard and Randy Mailman had the two goals for Thorne Academy. Goal scorers for Bonnie Eagle in that one. Tasha Hayden had two. Shell Morris won and Beth Curdy won. Academy has only had one loss and a tie since six games ago when they beat Noble 11 0. Boudreau able to get the ball off to the far corner, spins on it up the sideline a bit. And Von Eagle knocking it out of bounds. Now the Scots with a throw in. Up for Mailman, comes across for Saucier. Saucier punches it back for Mailman. Mailman trying to stop on it, loses it. Gets it off for Picard. Picard trying to get it up the far side for Foster. Foster controls it, back out in the middle. Ball loose. Saucier chips it off nicely. Gagnon comes in, but right there on defense. He's going to send it back out, but there's Picard again. Again, finds Foster. Morris comes in. Stolen from her. Taken away by Brown. And there's Picard. Picard, nice little ball, chipping it up for Foster. Foster spins, kicks it in the middle. It's loose. Foster comes back, kicks in, and it goes wide. And a player down for Bonnie Ego. She's in pain right now, and we have an official's timeout on the field with 35-25 to play in the second half. Thorne Academy leading 2-0 on goals by Suzanne Pickard and Sarah Gagnon, the senior and the freshman, picking up goals for Thorne Academy. Pierce, we're going to have a lengthy delay. We'll hold up a bit. Back with you in a moment. Laura Vogel assisted off the field. Senior midfielder in quite a bit of pain. She's now attended to down on the Bonnie Eagle bench. Scott's with a kick right now, trailing by two goals. Last regular season contest of the 96 campaign. The winner has a shot to make it in the postseason. The loser all but done. And Bonnie Eagle needs a lot of help, even if they do win here this afternoon, while Thorne Academy should get in with a victory. Coach Scott Nason trying to get his team into postseason for the third time in only five years as a varsity program. Two prior times they got in, they were number one and number two seeds in Western A. Academy will get the throw in on the far side of the field. A beautiful mid-October afternoon. And after the weather this past week, certainly feeling rather warm. Wind has died and wind chill factor last couple days was down around 35, 38 degrees during the course of the day. Big difference this afternoon. Bonnie Eagle now with some deep penetration. Nice little 
spin move as Marissa Gagnon tries to play defense and marking up very nicely on the Bonnie Eagle player. Nikki Tron, the junior wing, number seven, did a nice job. Goes up and out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Bonnie Eagle. Toss in the middle for Brooks. Back over for Tron. Back for Brooks. Brooks with a nice ball up the sideline. and Shot comes in beautifully from Tron and Parisian. Holding the corner of the post and then sprinting out to the middle of the field to make the save. Mailman with the steal, gets it up for Saucier, back over for Mailman. Mailman into midfield nicely for Picard. Picard trying to get it back for Mailman. Chance there, Mailman goes around the defender, hustling back on defense nicely for Bonnie Eagle is number 18. He comes up the sideline and Zenelik puts it back for Mailman. Mailman in the middle, chance for a shot here and Picard misses badly to the far side of the field. Bethany Curdy on that far side, number 18, playing some strong defense. But Thornton has had some chances from mid-range distance to get a few shots off. And sometimes they're just a little too generous and not selfish enough with the ball. Punched up ball, and Vasilovich gets to it first. Gets put up into midfield and a chance again for Bonnie Eagle. Great ball over. Bonnie Eagle now with some good penetration. And players go down, no call, ball loose, shot in, score! And actually right there, the no call gives Megan Curdy the scoring opportunity because I believe that should have been a call there on Thorn Academy and it would have set up a direct kick from about 20 yards out. Instead, Megan Curdy comes in and she brings the Scots within one goal with still 32 minutes to play. Goal coming at the eight minute mark. Of the second half and Megan Curdy has pulled the Scots within one. Big collision right before that play. And I believe the officials could have called a foul against Thorn Academy. And Von Eagle had had a good scoring chance from that point, but they wouldn't have had the automatic goal. And if you're a coach of Von Eagle, I'm sure you're saying thank you. Start out complaining and then realize, oh, okay, we'll take that. Nice corner this time and headed out of there by Thornton Academy. Sarah Gagnon turns and kicks it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Bonnie Eagle. Tron trying to work on the sideline. Gets it up for Brooks. Sarah Gagnon, number three, makes the steal for Thornton Academy. Gets it up. Looking for Missy Foster. She gets her. Pass out in the middle. Nice one for Mailman. Two on two break. And now having to stop up his mailman. And her pass over looking for Brown is not there. Zenelik, though, a nice kick in. There hasn't been a lot of fouls called here today. And not much called except for out of bounds. And that time looked like a handball for Misha Brown. She now gives it up for Zenelik, takes the long throw in. Headed right back out by the Scots. Brown heads it, it's down on the ground. She kicks it out in front. Chance for Foster. Foster turns on it and it rolls in to Jamie Braun, the goalkeeper. She punts a good ball up through the middle of the field and it'll roll all the way back to Jesse Boudreau. Fires it back inside the Bon Eagle zone. Brown turns 
leaves it for Picard. Picard trying to make something happen, trying to dribble in, has it stolen. Marissa Gagnon on the far side, can't control it. Goes out of bounds, it'll be a throw in for the Scots. Now it's anybody's game at 2-1 with still tons of time left here in the second half. Stone Academy trying to keep the pressure on. Knocked out by Sarah Gagnon. Will be a throw in for the Scots. with a nice move into the middle. Turns on it, left-footed shot right in on net. A beautiful move by Mailman. Goes right on Jamie Braun. So we talked about Mailman, only a junior, and already with 17 goals and now eight assists on the season. Sam Pickard, a great player, but this could be her last contest for Thorne Academy. She's also been playing since her freshman season. Nice play by Bonnie Eagle, a ball up the far side, and no one getting there defensively. The centering pass, though a little bit short, and collected by Brazilovic. Gets it up and over, and now Mailman controls. Mailman trips up on a dribble attempt. Ball knocked out, and they award the throw in to Thorn Academy. Saucier trying to send it up the far side, looking for Missy Foster. She gives chase over there with Donna Billado. Billado inbounds for Emily Brooks, stolen by Thorn Academy, but right to the Bon Eagle defense. There again, Mailman with the great footwork. Second time though, she stepped over the ball and actually on it, stripped her up. Chance for Bonnie Eagle as Heather Harmon breaks up. Brown, a nice job coming back to steal. Good ball control, nice placement from the ball from Marissa Gagnon. Up the sideline and Foster can't quite get to it. Blocked and stopped out in front. Picard's pass broken up. She had Mailman and Saucier on the far side. Nice pass up again, and there's Curdy. Megan Curdy's pass is up the sideline, and it'll stay in bounds for Picard. Picard turns on it, can't quite keep it in play.
Pickard a nice job on defense. As you see her dominance all over the field. One of the more aggressive players that always seems to be in the right place and able to make a play on the ball. Seen a lot of good skill by both players if you're a fan of soccer and watching soccer and the skill level. It's there on both teams and a lot of players possessing a lot of nice soccer skills. It's not just as I've spoken of prior. It's not kick and chase. There's a lot of skill and a lot of good thought going into the play of both teams. Sun now starting to set here at Hill Stadium. So we're at the 24 minute mark of the second half. Thorn Academy leading 2 1. That ball just goes over the sideline rather than the goal line. It'll be a throw in for Bonnie Eagle. Thornton now hemmed in their own end for quite some time. Thornton's Julie Boudreau and Sam Freeman check back in. Saucier and Foster will get a break. Boudreau Jesse Boudreau, that is, will get a booming kick up. Zanelik trying to get it out. They get it into the midfield position for Mailman. Mailman stops. Nice little turn. Being harassed. No call. Works through the middle. Still on it. Look at her. That time taken down. And finally the call. Just terrific. Dribbling skills by the junior, Randy Mailman. Woodrow will take the booming ball, send it through the middle, knocked down, popped up, and that'll just go over the net. Tough ball. Marshall Gagnon taking it off the side of the face. Takes a lot of heart. It was actually Razalovich, number 10, that took it off the side of the face. Big ball up, and Freeman had a chance at it. Couldn't play it. Knocked out of bounds off the Thornton player, and it'll be a throw-in for Bonnie Eagle. Heather Harmon trying to work up the middle. And now it's Susan Pickard trying to use her body. Spins and gets it upfield. Comes right back, and there's Pickard again. She's broken up. Brazilovic steps in to knock it upfield as Pickard and Harmon go to the turf. Indirect kick for Thorn Academy. Again, Boudreaux will come up to take it. She's here. Thornton's long distance kicker and thrower. The go to gal, if you will. That one goes through the middle and oh! Shot blocked by Pickard and just missed on the short side. And almost a big chance for Thornton Academy. And they award Thornton with the corner. Randy Melman, number 11, will go over to take it. Good high ball across the crease. No one to collect early. Popped up in the air and caught by goalkeeper Braun. And she punts it out ahead of her defense, ahead of her offense, actually, and maybe not the smartest thing there. Alicia Brown now trying to get control, and Bonnie Eagle kicks it out of bounds. Brown takes the throw in up the sideline and picks it right back up as it goes out of bounds, and that's the play and definitive play for most teams. They try to keep it 
on the sideline, up the sideline, because more often times than not, it's the other team that knocks it right back out of bounds further up the field. So you keep progressing up the sideline by virtue of balls being knocked out of bounds by your opponent. Handball out there by Pickard, no call. Up the near sideline for Bonnie Eagle. Nice pass for Harmon. Harmon steps in, in the danger zone. Four players converge. They all go down. And call goes against Bonnie Eagle. Rather late call. Kristen King and Heather Harmon coming in strong. And four players all colliding. Woodrow's ball all the way across midfield and then poked out of bounds by Kozen. Brown tries to get it back in. Brooks able to hammer it up the sideline and goes off the head of Savage. And it'll be a throw in for Bonnie Eagle. Parisian calls off the defense and makes the scoop and hits the punt upfield. And a booming ball out of there by Zenelik. <laughs> Marissa Gagnon comes in for Alexis Brazilovich. Out in front. Brown comes in, punches in the middle. Nice move by Mailman, turns and fires, and would have been a field goal, but not a goal. So Thornton Academy doing some nice things there offensively, but unable to convert at the 17 15 mark. Here in the second half, Thorn Academy leading 2-1. Jay Harper along with Dennis Avery. It's the Lady Trojans trying to maintain the number eight position in the heel point standings in Western A and move on into the postseason. Pickard with the steal, her shot, and just high and wide. As Mailman and Pickard have peppered many shots that have just missed the net. Clock continues to move down to 16.30 to play. Pickard again, a fine ball in Saucier, cutting in front. It's actually number seven, Julie Boudreaux, that almost got there. Braun made the nice save. High bouncing ball. Gagnon trying to get to it. And Saley able to get there, but then it comes back and punched up into the middle. Mailman back for Pickard. Pickard's pass broken up inside. Steal right there again by Mailman. So the players on both wings. Comes up through the middle, still with it, looking. Gets it off of Freeman. Freeman takes the shot and she had to be careful not to create an offsides on the pass. So I think that's why Freeman decided to take the shot. Nice booming ball by Gagnon. Comes up through the middle, and it's Emily Brooks for Bonnie Eagle. A lot of room to roam. Great ball up the sideline. This should be able to be contained by Bonnie Eagle's Kristen King. Can't quite control it. And Thorn Academy will get the kick.
Time running out on Bonnie Eagle. And Brooks using the body to control it in the middle. Taken back away by Thorn Academy. Julie Boudreaux doing some fine work on that far side. And now Sarah Gagnon, one of the goal scorers for Thorn Academy, trying to get something done. A lot of underclassmen for head coach Scott Nason, as well as some fine seniors on this team. So Thorn Academy will lose a lot, but get a lot back next year once again. Picard with it moving in to shooting range. She takes it, gets it off the side. Controlled by Mailman, spins. Oh, my. By about a foot. Ball girls struggling here a bit at Hill Stadium. Some of the players a little frustrated with the fact that the ball is taking so long to come back in off the sidelines. One of those thankless jobs. Brown going to work, makes the steal, good pass out in the middle. Pickard picks it up, gets it over for Mailman. Mailman comes in, shot, and saved by Braun. It's loose, chip, shot, score! It counts, and Thorn Academy has gone up 3-1. It's number seven, Julie Boudreaux, the freshman forward, picking up her third goal of the season. at 26-42 of the second half. Harmon with a nice spin move, gets it up the sideline. Nice pass off for Sally. Sally able to stay in bounds, so they say, and comes right back in, and a nice play from behind. Brooks' his ball up in the middle. And Boudreaux chips it out of bounds. Shot in on Braun. I believe came from Mailman. And her work in the middle and Braun able to Make the save and couldn't contain it. Rolled away from her. And as it did, I'm sure again it was Julie Boudreaux on that far side to chip it past. It's tough to see up here. Again, you're a great distance away and the number's not actually in bright colors at all. They're just kind of outlined. It makes it a little bit of a task. Chance for Bonnie Eagle coming in. Blocked out in front, still loose. Kicked in, good ball, and boom back out. And they'll call a bump, I believe, on Millman. Just outside of the box. Looks like Brooks will try to take it here from about 25 yards out. She chips it across, a great play, and the shot gets pooched wide. Thorn Academy fell asleep defensively, and a superb pass on the short side, but then the shot missed as Bonnie Eagle with an outstanding play there. with some offense coming up. Broken up by Spagnardi. That was 
Bethany Curdy, number 18, who had the scoring opportunity on the fine play from Brooks. Pass out. Thornton Academy, Freeman staying with it and has it just chipped away from her. Should be, I believe, a corner for Thornton Academy. And now they say it's a goal kick for Bonnie Eagle. Lindsay Libby checks in for Thornton Academy. Nisha Brown take a break. Under 10 minutes to play here in regulation. Bonnie Eagle with a lot of work to do now. Nice pass out in front. Good job coming over by Curdy to kick it away. There's Julie Boudreau, though. She spins, puts it back in play, and now kicked up towards midfield and gets by the Thornton defense. Boudreau now gambling, coming up. And she makes the play and then booms it off the body of Tasha Hayden. Hayden, the second leading scorer for Gary Stevens' team. Five goals, one assist, 11 points. Shell Morse, we haven't heard much from today. She has seven goals and two assists, leading scorer for Bon Eagle, 16 points. Megan Curdy has the one goal for Bon Eagle. She now has four goals on the season and eight points. The ball inadvertently goes off to Sally. Out of bounds, and it'll be Thornton's throw in as Missy Foster and Amber Saucier check back in. Freeman and Julie Boudreau will sit down. Parisian comes up, makes the save, and then punts it up towards midfield. Nice job of blocking the ball and loose out in front on sides. Little chip shot off the top of the crossbar. Still loose. Still loose. Blocked out in front. Parisian miraculously got in front of that one. Bonnie Eagle missing three huge chances. How was that possible? They should have scored on at least two out of the three chances. And one hit the crossbar, one Parisian just came across and got in the way miraculously. Bonnie Eagle with a chance to pull themselves right back in it with time enough to do damage. Sally gives Chase a great crossing ball. and Point Academy's defense. Marissa Zenelik will opt to kick it out and give Bonnie Eagle a corner kick. Suzanne Pickard right there. Break it up and put it out of danger. Brooks able to keep it in along the far side. Nice centering ball, but no one there for Bonnie Eagle. Good pass up. Libby couldn't keep her feet long enough to keep it in bounds, but gets it further up the field. Thornton now doesn't have to look for any great offense. They just have to play the good, solid defense. And of course, the best defense is a strong offense. So if Thornton can keep the pressure on, that'll certainly help the defense. Gagnon does a nice job at crossing it, but beautiful job of punching it up through. By Brooks again, and there is the ever-present Nikki Tron, number seven. Tron has played an outstanding game. Junior winger has certainly provided some excitement and a lot of fine skill on the sidelines, trying to set up her teammates. Harmon and also Emily Brooks have been the big story here for Bonnie Eagle, but they have not been rewarded 
for their play. And as far as being able to put one past goalkeeper Katie Parisian. Parisian certainly was tested in that last sequence. Jesse Boudreau pounds it up and out of bounds on the near side. Pass in for Brooks, spins on it beautifully. Houghton's still not out of danger here. They really are getting a little shot. And there's Brooks, there's a shot, and it just goes over. Hits the football crossbar and comes back into play. The officials realizing that. 4.44 to play now in the second half. And if Bonnie Eagle can put one past Parisian, they can certainly go all out in the last three or four minutes. And Thornton again avoiding a huge mistake in, in the middle and outstanding play by Brooks. Again, Brooks coming right in. Great ball skills, but was unable to put it past Parisian. Good ball off for Saucier. A three-on-one for Thornton Academy. Chance for Foster to come in alone. She shoots, and right at goalkeeper Jamie Braun. And good effort by Foster. Got a lot on it, but it was just right at Braun. Great play and a breakout for Thorne Academy. They had a three-on-one. Foster doing a good job keeping her feet and knowing she had to fire the ball before the defense caught her and did get the shot off. Nice ball up for a Sally. She turns and it's blocked off her. Alaire Savage making the defensive play, but that'll send Brooks to the corner for a corner kick with 335 and counting. Good chip out. Melman gets it up for Amber Saucier. She goes up the wing and it's broken up. Loose in the middle. Nice pass. Pickard to Mailman. Five on three breakout. Thorne Academy passing a little too far up in front. Here comes Emily Brooks again. Time definitely now a factor. The ally of the Golden Trojans leading 3-1 with two and a half to play. Thornton with a win here today can get themselves into postseason. It's almost a sure thing, but again, you can never say that with heel points. A big determining factor, I think, has to do with the greeley Wyndham game. And if Greeley loses to Wyndham, that would definitely put the Trojans in. But if really came up with the upset, Wyndham in, I believe, Class B in soccer, a outstanding team this season, I think. Really would still have a shot. Tron slips down and it'll be a throw in for Thorne Academy. Nice little header out in front. Pickard setting things up. Pass across for Mailman. All alone. What a pass. And the shot just goes wide. Great skill by these players, though. You can't say enough about these players. Amazing that I believe Mailman was trying to shoot it on net, but it came ever so close to being a pass for Foster as all three of them just displaying such prolific soccer skills and great teamwork. And it's unfortunate for them. They haven't been rewarded themselves with more goals, as be the case for Bonnie Eagle. Both teams have had some great chances go by the boards. Nisha Brown tries to keep it in play. It rolls over the end line as we're now down to 45 seconds to play. So... Thorne Academy will finish the regular season at 7, 5, and 2. Two ties coming against Lewiston and South Portland, both 2-2 two, two ties. 
Losses at the hands of Deering, Bonnie Eagle, Sanford, 2-1 loss to the Redskins. 4-0 winners over Massabesic. Lost to Westbrook, 3-0, and Deering, 4-0. Two fine teams in Western A this year. But as I said, since that loss to Westbrook, they came back, beat Noble, 11-0, Portland, 2-0. Lost to Deering, 4-0, then tied South Portland and beat Edward Little and McCauley, both by the score of 4-1. And that'll do it here this afternoon at Hill Stadium. Thorn Academy Golden Trojans win three to one. And now hope and watch the Hill Point standings and see if they'll make it on into the next round. Goal scorers today for Thorn Academy at 25-23 of the first half. It was Suzanne Pickard scoring, getting a pass to Jamie Braun on assist to Randy Mailman and Missy Foster. And both those players controlling the ball greatly, as well as Pickard to score on a spectacular highlight reel style goal. And the Trojans led 1-0. Less than three minutes later at 28-43, it was Sarah Gagnon, the freshman, on the tremendous flip inbound pass from Jesse Boudreaux. And Ford Academy led 2-0 at the end of the first half. At the eight-minute mark of the second half, Bonnie Eagle got one back. Megan Curdy scoring it past Katie Parisian. It was 2-1. And then at 26-42, the icer on the cake, or the icing on the cake for Thorne Academy, as quite sure it was number seven, Julie Boudreaux, after the shot from Mailman. So it would be Mailman the assist and Julie Boudreaux, the freshman getting the goal. So two freshmen scoring today. Bodes well for the future for Scott Nason and his troops as they have now finished the regular season and they'll watch and wait and hope to make it into postseason play. Former cameraman, Dennis Avery, and to the parents of the Thorn Academy soccer team who helped sponsor this game today, a big thank you and best of luck in postseason play. For all the folks, I'm Jay Hopper saying so long from Hill Stadium in Saco. Once again, Thorn Academy winners 3-1 this afternoon.